All right, in this video, we are going to be talking about the GOAT. Yes, the GOAT himself, Ben Johns, at least on the men's side. Um, and uh, yeah, we're going to be talking about how he is continuing to develop his game even today. So for those of you who feel stuck or maybe you know you don't feel like you really can improve or maybe you just feel like you have arrived, uh, even the, the top and the best players in the world are adding new things to their game. And we're going to talk about that specifically. Um, and specifically, we're going to be going over Ben John's latest video on attacking. So uh, obviously, if you uh, are an aspiring player trying to get to higher and higher levels, uh, I want you to at least uh, understand and kind of see from a different lens uh, what the pro players are doing and what they're developing even today. Uh, you know, Ben Johns here, the most accomplished men's player, is still working on things. And we're going to get really specific here. All right. So uh, actually, before that, if you enjoy this video, give it a like. And then if you are interested in in-person elite coaching and you're looking for a training opportunity to really elevate your game, uh, check out our training opportunities below in the description. So uh, let's jump right in. This video here really, really shows uh, how Ben has been working on his game. Uh, not only that, uh, but it kind of you know shows his personality a little bit, which is kind of cool, but shows uh, specifically some of the drills that he's doing. And we're gonna we're gonna actually dissect it and talk about it. And uh, yeah, so this is Ben. The first thing that he says is he's working on some patterns attacking. So we're going to watch this. And specifically, he's working on his two-handed off-the-bounce attack. It's really, really good stuff here. Um, I'm going to show you the first one. And then obviously, we got Colin working on his forehand counters. Okay, so we're going to go back and we're going to talk about actually why this is and, you know, what, what the purpose of this is. Number one is, uh, for those of you who don't know, um, you know, me and Ben kind of started around the same time. So I've known him a really, really long time. And, um, you know, playing with him. Uh, you know, or against him through the years and kind of knowing him, uh, he has obviously transformed his game and his game has gone through different iterations, um, you know, every batch of years or, or whatever, right? Uh, again, uh, you know, I can look at his singles game. I've studied his game completely. I, I can look at his doubles game. You know, the backhand slice came in, you know, him really transforming the singles game to the cat and mouse but here uh, we see a clear view of him working on a new weapon which is off the bounce speed ups if you go watch last year okay if you actually watch last year he didn't do any of the this he did not speed up the ball he didn't even dink with two hands uh, very very rarely uh, my prediction is, and again, what I teach in my intensives, uh, one of the things that I'm really, really adamant about is creating offense off of both wings. Again, if you are a 3-0 or a 3-5, you know, maybe we save some of those things um, for later. Obviously, obviously, fundamentals is key, but you know, 4-0 plus, we need to start adding offense off the forehand wing and the backhand wing uh, with topspin with speed ups targets and pace so uh, we're seeing even the goat the, uh, the best of the best again he didn't have this shot a year ago so oh, again my prediction is he's going to be so at this point i would say even if you look at the last ppa he's thrown in some more uh, two-handed dinks and the reason why is he's trying to add offense with topspin okay when it comes to topspin or when it comes to dinking uh, one of the things that i teach in my intensives is topspin is king obviously slice is good um as well 
but topspin is just more aggressive because it the ball comes up and then the ball com it comes down and dips down so you can see ben here working on the two-handed speed up here my prediction is that he actually is going to start you know dinking with two hands more and more and more maybe to the point where he hits more two hands than one we'll have to see but here's the speed up again look at how low he's getting and the really important thing here is analyzing this is that paddle tip is down and it's a very very short stroke you can see that his paddle is already in ready position right after he hits the ball so here we go he gets nice and low very very low knee bend paddles on the ground almost paddle tip down contacts out in front and then right there he's back into already really close to that ready position obviously in this um example he's explaining how he's going for colin's dominant side and colin knows it so he's working on his forehand counter okay so here's the counter by colin okay and look at ben because and this is one thing you'll see because he attacked already with two hands you'll you'll see him leave his left hand on uh, and then again he's in a good position to to counter back here's the counter to the counter and there we go uh, one strategic thing that I kind of just want to show you is that if you can hit a good attack, whether you're attacking one or two hands, but if you could get it on the right side of the body and stretch them out like this, you know, coming off your paddle, if you know your opponent is stretching and reaching like this, it's typically going to be late, right? So the counter is mo more than likely going to come back to Ben on the side that he attacked from, right? The only way for Colin to get this counter back to Ben's, you know, forehand side, he would have to be really early. So this is why you see that counter actually come back. And that's why Ben, you know, I think sits to that backhand there. Okay. Let's see this next one here. Again, getting low. There's the attack. Okay, there's the counter here, boom. And you can see here how Colin gets his counter down and Ben gets his ball back and then resets it in here again. Okay, so let's go back to that one. That was a good one. Here we go. He drops his paddle down. Look, he gets low with his feet or with his knees, sorry. And then again, paddle tip down, speeds up the ball. There's a counter here, and then there's a counter to the counter. Here's another one. Okay, so one of the things that Ben has worked on and also transformed to is his two-handed volleys, because at times, especially when you're doing a speed up like this, you know, you don't have time to take your hand off, right? If you're doing a speed up and your opponent is countering, you kind of have your hands already in that position so it makes sense to just volley again with two hands again. You'll see it here. Or get ready for a block like that. And then now he talks about, um, again, if you're you know, learning two hands, one of the things that I've totally changed in my teaching, I mean, I've, I've been playing this game in nine years, and I, I've been evolving as a coach as well, trying to be the best coach possible. But... Um, you know, not only did I not teach the two hander three, three or so years ago, but I, I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't start to have the two handed backhand, um, you know, in my own game until like five years ago. Okay. So just to, you know, show you and tell you the evolution of my own game, I didn't even start using two hands until quite a while ago um obviously with the waters and lee and lee waters and then the newmans you know we have riley newman lindsey newman you know with without them coming in i mean it was going to happen eventually but without them coming in you know uh, it wouldn't have i don't think accelerated the two-handed uh, shots and two-handed game uh without them so we're gonna go back here what was i saying by that Oh, okay. So, so now that being said, 
you know, because Ben is working on, he, he was talking about he's working on his two-handed off the mount speed ups. It's really important that he throws in some, that's a speed up there, but it's really important that he throws in some dinks as well, okay? So if, you know, if you're working on, there we go, there's that, there's that dink. And this is what obviously I'm teaching players now, especially for a plus to throw in some two-handed dinks again for the, you know, for the purpose of later on, you know, learning the control of dinks, but because you want to create offense on both wings. So here we go. Here's a topspin dink. And if you look at that motion, look how vertical it is. Getting that topspin. We're going to go back here. Sorry. Here's the ball. So, you know, paddles low, brushing up on the ball. And again, it's very compact and his setup is very similar to his speed up and watch him again. He sets up the same way. So disguise is key at the highest levels. Uh, you will see pros um, for their dink specifically. You'll see them set up the same way. You know, if they drop their battle tip down or if they're in this position, they keep the ball out in front, you will see them all the time set up the same way. So that's very hard to read or you, you don't know what to expect. And at higher levels, that's why it's really important to make sure you're always ready for the speed up. So, so here we go. It sets up the same way. There's the speed up, the reset. Okay. So, um, things to remember. All right, Benny boy. Hit on the outside of the ball is important. Again, I would say depending on where you're attacking and where your body position is. Uh, I could see that. Watch out for the ball angle. Uh, you know what? Don't really know what he meant by that. I'm gonna have to watch this again, obviously. So look at this, look at this from this view. It's really cool to see kind of his progression here. Topspin dinks, and again, Look at his uh, left finger. Again, when, I, when I'm hitting this shot, I've been working on this as well. Um, I don't enjoy the left finger up. Again, it's a totally preference thing. But I want you to watch how, how low he gets. And interesting, look at, he's almost in a squat position. And you can see um, he drops that paddle head down and he comes up. And he's really working on that dominant side attack there to the left again for most right-handed players that's the weak side because you know players have to actually they actually have to chicken wing or sometimes they're late on this ball so this is just a great spot to attack you can see colin here counter and then ben with the reset okay so uh let's see what he does next we're gonna keep it moving and I think this is actually the part of the drill where he kind of, you know, kind of attacks or dinks anywhere. But, uh, and also, oh, actually, sorry. This is, this is the part where he is practicing his two-handed counter volley down, you know, front from a down the line shot. And, you know, speaking of things he's added to his game, obviously we talked about how he's adding the two-hander now. Um, the two-handed speed up off the bounce, that counter volley, you know, with two hands, that is something that he's developed in, I would say, the last two two or so years. Again, why that's really important and allows him to counter harder. And um, again, sometimes you can actually get to that spot a little bit quicker, I think, uh, with, your, with your left hand on, on the paddle. But... Uh, Regardless here, Colin is speeding up, working on his speed ups here. You can see this down the line and watch Ben here. Just working on that two handed counter and not important uh, or most importantly, getting the ball down, not just fa fast. Right. So he's talking about how he's been working on that, how that's really important. And he talks about how lunging and being in that wide stance is critical. Uh, so here we go. There's another one there. We're going to go back. And again, 
Colin is not telling him where or, or when he's going to hit this ball. They just continue to practice the same pattern. And you can see Ben go to different spots. Sometimes he goes right at Colin. Uh, sometimes he goes, you know, cross court or down the line. And now we're going to get into some attacks here with Colin going to the dominant side. Working on trying to chicken wing Ben. Okay, so if we if we go back here, here's Colin here. Paddle tip down. Okay, so that was the one on that side. And here's the one to the dominant side. This is really tough to cover both wings. We talk about this in our intensives, but that's that side there. That's a tough ball to cover, especially from a really disguised speed up. So, um, defending multiple spots here, here's that two handed backhand from this position here. Here's Colin with the speed up. I know there's words in the way. There we go. There's the words. And then here's Ben coming in with that two hander coming across. So that's perfect placement. And again, this is where they are now practicing different targets. And, and Ben talks about how, you know, he, he misses balls all the time. I mean, this is, this is what practice looks like. Okay. So really quick, I just, you know, I just thought it was really interesting to kind of show you again, I'll link the whole video below, uh, of the Johns brothers practicing some of these things, but whatever level you are, it doesn't matter. Three Oh, three, five, four, Oh, four, five, and, and keep going. Even the players at the top of their game are working on new shots and they're refining the shots they currently have. Okay, no one's perfect, but as we progress in our game, in our technique, in our anticipation, right, it takes hard work. So for those of you who are drilling and those of you who are watching these videos to learn and to really, really, you know, improve your pickleball IQ, and your game, kudos to you, all right? Kudos to you. Uh, I just really hope that this kind of highlights, I just wanna you know, highlight some of the best players in the world right now and how hard they're working on just on learning new things. Um, last thing I do wanna say is that, you know, Ben, I, I told you, you know, I started around the same time with him, uh, as him, you know, as he's, evolved and skyrocketed his game uh you know a lot of the things that he's done and and learned and practiced it doesn't come in right away so we're seeing the evolution we're seeing this two-handed off the bounce speed up which we talked about he's not utilizing it every chance he gets he has to get the reps in practice and then slowly uh probably in rec play uh, the very little rec play that they play because they drill all the time, but bring it out and then in tournaments start to bring it out. So for those of you who are working on a new skill, a new shot, very, very, very important to make sure that you are drilling and you gain confidence when you're drilling first, because you can't just take a new shot to the courts uh, confidently. And you'll see that you will see that with the pros as well. And that's the way I teach it. That's the way I, I practice uh, the, the new shots that I'm working on. So uh, again, leave a comment below. Tell me what you think. Uh, tell me if you saw this video with the Johns and tell me what shots you are working on right now currently. Again, if you're looking for a live in-person training at, from elite level coaches uh, and you want elite level coaching, make sure you check the description below. I'd love to see you on the court. And until next time, see you later.